Today we're going to focus on knife skills and I'm going to make guacamole for you guys. I've been told that my guac recipe is the best, so if you guys make this at home, definitely let me know what you think. To begin, let's go over the anatomy of a chef knife, a tool that you will use in your kitchen often for mincing, dicing, or cubing. So every chef knife has two main parts, a handle and a blade. The blade includes the tip the spine, the cutting edge, and the heel. For the anatomy of a chef knife, it has two main parts, the handle and the blade. The blade has the tip, which is great for making small delicate cuts, the cutting edge, which is the working part of the blade, the spine, which is the top of the blade directly opposite the cutting edge. It gives the chef a place to look and keep their knife cut straight and the heel is the rear part of the cutting edge. It will cut through large rough foods when weight and force is needed. Let's go over some knife safety tips. First, you wanna make sure that you have a sharp knife. Dull knives actually cause more injuries in the kitchen because you have to apply more pressure to cut through items. Two, make sure you have a stable work surface. You'll notice that I have a damp cloth towel underneath my cutting board, and this is gonna prevent it from sliding around as I'm slicing and dicing. When you're holding your knife, you want your thumb and pointer finger against the blade, and for your guiding hand, you want a claw position or claw grip. That way, there's no way you're going to cut your fingers. You might graze against your knuckles, but not cutting yourself. You also wanna make sure you're taking your time, especially when you're learning these techniques. It's not a race. Make sure you're paying attention, and make sure you're avoiding distractions in the kitchen. When you're finished, you should clean, dry, and put your knives away. You never want to put them into a dishwasher or into a sink full of soapy water. Notice I have two bowls over here. One is for my trash or things that I'm not going to keep, and my other bowl is for usable scraps, things that I could potentially use in another recipe, or often I'll make vegetable broth out of my scraps. Are you guys ready to make guacamole? I am. So we're gonna start with our star ingredient today, our avocado. Avocados grow on tree, they have a pit in the inside. So when we cut this, we're gonna cut around the pit. We're gonna take that pit out, and then we're going to cube this avocado into one inch squares. Some benefits of eating avocado, it's a fruit that's loaded with heart healthy monounsaturated fat. It's also high in potassium, vitamin C, vitamin E, and antioxidants. So we're actually gonna use two different knives for cutting the avocado, but we're gonna start with our chef knife and then we're going to move into our paring knife, which is a smaller knife, better for more intricate cuts. So let's go ahead and get started. We wanna make sure we're holding the knife appropriately. Guiding hand, I got it tucked. We're gonna cut straight down until we hit that pit. We're gonna go all the way around, key avocado. And there we go. So to remove the pit, you wanna use the heel of your knife. We're gonna gently push it down into the pit, give it a little twist, that should come right out. You can put that in your trash bowl, unless you wanna to try to grow an avocado tree, which I don't know how to do that, but maybe ask Mr. Enders, he knows what's up with that. Switch over to my paring knife. I'm gonna move my knife over about an inch, make a slice, move my knife over again, do the same thing. I'm not going through the entire avocado, just making a slice. You would never wanna do this in your hand, just in case your knife does go through the avocado, you could potentially cut yourself, so make sure you have it on your cutting board. Now I'm just gonna give the avocado a little turn, do the same exact thing on the other side. So I'm moving my knife over about an inch, making a little slice. Slice, slice. Each one should be approximately an inch apart because we're making a cube. And then we're just gonna scoop that right out into our bowl. 
Next up is a lime. Not only does lime add flavor, the acids slow the oxidation and the browning of the avocado. So it's a win-win. So um, I like to kind of roll my lime around just to kind of loosen it up. The juices will come out a little easier. I'm gonna use my chef knife just to make one slice. And I'm going to use a juicer to get the juice out, but this is nice because it catches the seeds. Now we'll add in our red onion. This contains vitamin C and some of your B vitamins. It's also a good source of prebiotics, which can help with digestion. The cut we're going to focus on is a small dice, which is a quarter inch cubed. So you'll notice with the onion, there's a root end, and then there's kind of like this like tail end. We want to cut the tail end off so we have a flat surface, so it's not rolling around on our cutting board but we always want to leave the root intact. This is what's holding the onion together. So go ahead, tuck those fingers, get a good grip on your knife, and we're gonna cut off the tail end. So now you'll notice I have a flat surface, nothing's rolling around on my cutting board, and we are gonna cut directly through the root. We're not cutting it off, we're just cutting through. Now if I have the onion cut in half, this papery layer of peel comes off much easier. And I like to take off the first layer of onion as well just because parts of it can be a little papery still. But I will save that for my usable scraps and make a vegetable broth out of it. So now let's make a small dice, which is a quarter inch cube. The first step is make sure you have your chef knife ready to go. We're going to make two horizontal cuts We're gonna give that onion a little spin. I like to start in the middle with one cut going all the way through and then I move to the right and then to the left. Each cut that I make is going to be a quarter inch apart because in the end we want a small dice. So again, I like to start in the middle. I'm gonna move my knife over about a quarter inch and slice straight down. Now you'll notice that the root is still intact. So now I'll do the same thing from the middle to the left. So try to make sure your cuts are pretty close together. Now we'll give that onion a little turn. And we are going to cut, move our knife over again, a quarter inch, and we're gonna cut straight down. The tomato promotes heart health and it contains an antioxidant called lycopene. This antioxidant can reduce your risk of certain types of cancers. The cut we're going to do on this beautiful tomato is a medium dice, which is a half inch cube. So for cutting the tomato, I'm going to use a serrated knife. Sometimes when we put too much pressure on something soft like a tomato by using a chef knife, it can kind of smush. So a serrated knife is a really great option for a tomato. So to cut the tomato, um, I like to put where it was growing from the vine down on my cutting board. And then what I'm going to do to accomplish a medium dice is I'll move my serrated knife over about a half inch. And I'm going to cut straight down without going all the way through. Now I'll move my knife over about a half inch and I'll do the same thing there. So we're gonna keep going with this cut until we get to the other side. And you'll notice with the serrated knife, it's more of a sawing motion for the cut. So you should kind of have like a tomato fan at this point. We're gonna give it a little churn. We're gonna do the same exact thing. Move the knife over a half inch, cut straight down. And with your guiding hand, you might need to kind of hold the tomato together slightly. Maybe 
give it a little turn just to finish this side up. All right, so now we'll turn the tomato on its side. Again, guiding hand, you kind of need to hold things together. And then we'll move our knife over about a half inch because we want a medium dice. And we're gonna cut straight down this time going all the way through. And you'll notice I have little half inch squares here. And once you get to you know, about this much tomato, you might want to switch back over to a chef knife to do a rough chop on the rest. So I'm just going to kind of go around. And a rough chop is just a reduction of size when the shape doesn't really matter. You just want to make it a little bit smaller. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and add this to our bowl. Uh, notice I'm using the spine of my knife not the blade. Bell pepper is next on the list. This is an excellent source of vitamin C and A as well as potassium. The cuts we're going to focus on are batne, which is a quarter inch wide by about two inches long, and a julienne, which is an eighth of an inch wide by about two inches long. So to begin, we're going to need to top and tail, meaning we're taking off the top and the bottom of the pepper. It doesn't mean that you can't add this to your guacamole or save it as a snack for later. I would not throw it away though because it is perfectly fine to eat. So use your chef knife. Try not to cut too far into the pepper. And these parts here, we can do a rough chop on and we can still add them into our guacamole. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a batonne and a julienne. You'll notice that there are seeds and membrane inside of this pepper and we need to get that out. So what we'll do is make a slice down one of the sides, just big enough that you can get your chef knife in. Now we'll just simply go around that membrane and you don't want this part because it's kind of bitter so we'll save that for something like a vegetable broth when you're cutting a pepper you want the skin side down on your cutting board I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one half we'll use this half for the batonne and this half for the julienne so julienne remember is an eighth of an inch wide so as you make your cuts you want to really focus on getting them really close together I'm just going to cut this in half again, move my knife over about an eighth of an inch. And you're going to end up with a bunch of small matchsticks. So that is what a julienne is. It's another name for it is a matchstick. Now we're going to focus on the batonne, which is larger than the julienne. A batonne is a quarter inch wide by about two inches long. So again, with the thicker skin side down on the cutting board, we'll move our knife over about a quarter of an inch this time and cut straight down to make the batonne. So when we cross cut these pieces, we're going to end up with a small dice, which is a quarter inch cubed. So we'll just bundle them up. Take just a few at a time. Move our knife over a quarter inch and cut straight down to get a small dice. which help with digestive function. The cut we want to focus on is a mince, meaning very small particles or fine shreds. There's no specific shape, there's no dimension, we just want really, really tiny pieces because let's be real, nobody wants a big hunk of garlic in their guacamole. So this is called the head and inside are the cloves. We're gonna use two cloves of garlic and you'll notice, like the onion, they have this papery layer. In order to get that off, you should take your chef knife, place it on top of your garlic gently, and use your guiding hand to give it a good whack. 
Make sure your fingers are up, not down when you're doing this. Once you give it that whack, you'll notice that this papery layer comes right off. And if your garlic is fragrant and sticky, that's a good thing. It means it's fresh. So for a mince, I always start with a rough chop, meaning we're going to reduce the size and then we're going to go into our mince, which means fine particles. All right, so you wanna gather it in a little pile, just kind of gently wipe off any that has gathered on your blade. And for um, mincing, what I like to do is take my guiding hand and put three fingers on top of the blade for some control. We're cutting with like the last two to three inches of the blade for mincing. You just want to run your knife over the garlic until you have very small particles. Every once in a while, you'll also want to use the spine of your knife to gather your garlic back into a pile. Give it a little swipe to get any that has gathered on the blade off and continue. up by adding in a jalapeno pepper. Jalapenos contain capsaicin, which makes the pepper spicy, but it's also an anti-inflammatory and promotes healthy blood flow. The cut we're going to focus on is a brunoise, also known as a fine dice. It's an eighth of an inch cubed. For the jalapeno, we'll start by cutting off the stem, then we're going to cut it in half lengthwise and remove the seeds. or a fine dice, we want our cuts to be an eighth of an inch apart. So I'm going to use a paring knife, move my knife over about an eighth of an inch, and I'm going to cut straight through, making small matchsticks or julienne cuts. Now I'm going to switch back over to my chef knife, and I am going to now cross cut into a brunoise or fine dice. Move the knife over about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to cut straight down. A little word of advice from me to you. Try not to touch your face, your eyes, or anything after you handle a jalapeno pepper. Some of the oils will seep into your fingertips and it will burn. Wash your hands really well after you handle a jalapeno, or you can always put on a pair of gloves before you do the cut. Some people think cilantro tastes like soap. I don't, so we're gonna add some cilantro into this guacamole. Cilantro can help fight inflammation, but it's also a good source of vitamin A, which is essential for your eyesight. The cut we're gonna focus on is called a chiffonade. It's a ribbon or a fine shred. To accomplish this cut, you want to gather the leaves of the cilantro and the stems too into a fine little bundle. So you're kind of rolling it up into a bundle. And then we'll just take our chef knife and rock through to make a fine shred or ribbon. Some people take the stem and throw it away, but the stem actually has just as much, if not more flavor than the leaf. So keep the stem, just mince it finely. Another perk to this guacamole recipe is almost all of the ingredients in this bowl have fiber, which most Americans do not get enough of on a daily basis. So I don't want to really talk about poop right now, but if you don't poop every day, you probably aren't getting enough fiber. <laughs> so 
Enough poop talk. <laughs> Let's talk about seasonings. To bring out the best of the flavors in this guacamole, we need to add seasonings. There are four go-to seasonings that I always put in my guacamole. First, I like cayenne pepper, but just know a little goes a long way with this one. It's very spicy, so if you like a little kick to your guacamole, add about a quarter to a half teaspoon of cayenne. So I'm gonna just sprinkle a little on my hand first to make sure I don't get too much. Next up is smoked paprika. Uh, you could add regular paprika as well, but I really like the smoky flavor that this adds to the dish. So I'm just gonna give it a generous sprinkle. And you can always taste this and add more, but remember you can't take away. So always start with less and add more as you go after you taste. I also like to add in garlic herb. This is something that I add to a lot of my meals at home. I always have this handy next to my stove for cooking. Lastly, we're gonna add in a generous amount of sea salt. I love salt. <laughs> it just makes everything taste better. It really does. But if you have high blood pressure, maybe pump your brakes with the salt. The final step in this process is to use your masher to smash it all together and then you have a guacamole. best part. Let's taste the guacamole and then adjust our seasonings accordingly. I think it tastes pretty good. Now that I've tasted the guacamole, I think I'm going to add just a little bit more salt. Now it's perfect. We're gonna plate. Uh, maybe you're serving this for your family or friends and you want it to look a little prettier than just a bowl. So I like to use a clean white dish. We're going to add the guacamole in. Maybe add a sprinkle of smoked paprika just for the look. That's a little garnish. Pretty chip and that in the middle. Voila, Miss Knott's guac. I hope you guys like it. I hope that you learned something new from this not cooking demonstration and try out this guacamole. It is legit the best. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.